Hi, everyone. Uh, my name's Sky. Happy to be here. Um, so I'm excited to talk to you about my perspective on the future of retail. Um, and I think it'll be a story that you may have not heard before. Um, I think in my perspective is coming from uh, launching Simon Venture Group. And I think the, the truth is oftentimes an untold story when you are talking about retail. Um, so I launched Simon Venture Group. Uh, it's the largest venture capital fund focused on retail. I'm investing in both indoor retail technology as well as e-commerce. And really with a focus on investing in the things that help improve the overall shopping experience. And if you're not familiar with Simon, I'm sure many of you are, but Simon, they're an S&P 100 company. It's the largest US mall operator. It's also the largest retail real estate company in the world. Everyone's probably heard this old cliche, right? That the mall is dead, right? It hasn't happened yet. And as we're gonna see with the rest of this presentation, it's not going to happen. But I would like to start a new cliche, which is that e-commerce is dead. <laughs> and we'll, when you look at it, let me really compare e-commerce to in-store for a second, right? So if you have a destination site, a website, big marketing budgets to drive online traffic to your site versus paying rent, which can oftentimes get you a much better uh, cost to acquire a customer from people walking by your door. Or conversion rates, right? E-commerce is horrible on conversion rates at 3%. Versus if you have a store, just for walk-ins, you have 20 to 30% convert to making a purchase. And you probably have all experienced this, right? If you walk into a store, sometimes you're not even expecting to make a purchase, but you'll walk out with things in your hands. And also basket size, right? E-commerce has really low basket sizes. The reason for that is that typically e-commerce is hyper-targeted purchasing. You're going in with a mission, and you end up buying one thing. Versus when you go into a store, you typically buy multiple things. Um, maybe you weren't expecting to, but you do. And it's been shown that people spend 1.5 to three times more in store, and retailers know this. And lastly, on returns, returns are huge with e-commerce, right? Up to 40% of items ordered online are returned, right? Versus in store, it's a lot lower. That's because you can already check the quality of it. You can see if it fits you, and you don't return it. So with all of this, it pretty much makes sense that of why e-commerce sites, about 65% of them fail within 18 months and 90% in five years. Kind of a question like, why would anyone create e-commerce with stats like this, right? And, but we all know, right, e-commerce is big and it's really big. It's $304 billion in the US estimated for 2014. And it's growing at a pretty good clip of about 15.5% growth. But if you thought e-commerce is big, in-store retail is huge. How huge? It's 4.4 trillion, right? E-commerce actually only represents about 6.4% of total retail sales. In-store represents almost 94%. And let's look at the numbers. I mean, look at the data of forecasting for US e-commerce. We're at a very interesting point with 2014 for e-commerce. We're at a very pivotal point overall in its history. It's the first year that e-commerce is actually decreasing its overall growth, right? Last year it was 16%, or it was almost 17%, prior to that it was 16, and now it's starting to drop off. Over the next five years, it's gonna be decreasing down to 10% and continuing to go in that direction. And if we look at um, mobile commerce, it's even more extreme. This year it's gonna be growing at 37%. That might not seem so small, but the year prior to that, it was growing at 70%, and before that, 82%, and it's massively decreasing in its growth. It's maturing actually really, really fast. But if we look at total retail sales and in-store sales, you see it's a very mature industry, right? Has very consistent growth of three and 4% respectively. Um, and if you look out into the future, by 2018, it's expected that total percent of retail sales e-commerce is gonna grow from about 5.2% only to about 9%. And mobile commerce is only gonna grow from 0.6 to 2.4% of total retail sales. And from looking at this and knowing the decreasing overall growth rates, e-commerce and mobile commerce are not gonna represent the majority of retail going forward. But I think there's even a bigger story here, which is that mobile commerce is gonna grow from 11% to 27% of e-commerce. Essentially, mobile commerce is eating e-commerce's lunch, right? And I also find fascinating, if you look at all the data behind e-commerce, there's oftentimes a little disclaimer at the bottom that says, this data includes products or services ordered using the internet, regardless of the method of payment or fulfillment. This begs the question of attribution. Where is a sale actually taking place, right? 
So if you go into a store and you use a register, or you end up using an iPad, is that an in-store sale or an online sale? And how is that being tracked, right? Or if you're <coughs> at home on your couch and you're, you find that, oh, they have the perfect thing I need at the store down the road, I'm gonna order it and either have it same day delivered <coughs> or go and pick it up. Is that an in-store sale or an online sale? It's clear that the line is blurring between both of them. And when we look at statistics that are coming out, like e-commerce in the future is gonna represent almost 9% of retail sales, you have to ask yourself, what percent of that is attributable to a physical store? Where did that sale actually take place? You know, from a retailer and brand perspective, it doesn't matter. Whether it was an in-store sale, e-commerce, mobile commerce, it all went to the same piggy bank, right? And this is from the overall you know, theme of omni-channel retailing, where you can, um, where you can fulfill from anywhere, um, you can order from anywhere, whether it's in-store or online. <clears throat> and there's a lot of key words that are coming up now, like showrooming, right? Where you're in a store and you end up taking your mobile device out, searching for it, maybe you find it somewhere else at a lower price or you find that it's not available there so you order it online. People talk about showrooming as it is the end of, of physical retail. But in fact, the opposite, which is called webrooming or reverse showrooming, is way more popular. About 69, 70% of us show, you know, do reverse showrooming, where you go online in advance, you discover what you want, you learn what you need, and then you go into the store to actually make the purchase. We're doing it a lot more frequently, and we also spend a lot more when we do go in the store. So this overall theme goes into the e-commerce is going physical, and the mall is going digital. <clears throat> Some of the biggest players, like Amazon, they're about to open up a location in New York City across from Macy's, right? And that location is not only going to be a distribution center for Amazon, it's going to be where they're probably selling a lot of their devices like the Kindle and the Fire. And it's not just Amazon doing this. There's lots of retailers like Bonobos. It's a very big brand for pants. They're opening up stores. And countless others. You have Warby Parker, Birchbox, Bobble Bar, Rent the Runway, and Trunk Club. All of these really well-established e-commerce brands are now opening up physical retail and actually increasing their overall margins. <clears throat> it's interesting, there's a study that was recently done um, by Harvard Business Review. They do this uh, ranking every year of the top best performing CEOs of the world. And at the top of the list, it's probably no surprise that Jeff Bezos, CEO of Amazon's up there. But what might be surprising is also at the top of the list is David Simon, the CEO of Simon. Not necessarily expected for the, the mass public. <clears throat> And the way that that uh, list was put together was based on who is increasing their share prices the most and who is increasing their market size the most. If you look at Amazon, they've had a pretty impressive five-year CAGR of growing their share price by about 19%. 2014 wasn't the best year for Amazon, but overall the company is growing and looking for long-term growth in general. But if you look at Simon Property Group, right, actually a higher five-year CAGR. You're growing at 22% compared to Amazon. And that's because Simon is also focused on the future of retail. And actually in the past year or two, Simon has had the highest occupancy rates across all of its malls. And that's because the mall is the ultimate shopping experience and a community center. You think about when you go shopping in a mall, you're really going for an enhanced experience, right? There's not only free Wi-Fi, but in the future there's gonna be free Wi-Tri, which is wireless electricity. Literally, you're walking through the mall and all of your devices are charging wirelessly. Or if you walk in through the, the common area, you'll have digital uh, kiosks where you can discover things in the mall. <clears throat> or if you're in the food courts, you'll have iPads so you can continue to discover things in the mall. And you know, the mall really is the center of the community in that it has lots of restaurants and lots of entertainment. You have well-known food brands like the Cheesecake Factory but you also have local favorites like Zinburger that are being put into a lot of malls. It's a place that you go for big uh, entertainment shows, sometimes seeing well-known singers, or you go there to see local talent, right? People playing the violin from school. It's a place that you go for the holidays, you're seeing uh, for Christmas or Easter. You certainly go there to go to the movies. <coughs> and it's even a fun place for flash mobs. <coughs> When we talk about millennials, right, this big, large, up-and-coming uh, generation, millennials, if you look at their shopping behavior, actually a really good term for them is mall If you think about you know, how, how they shop, 
not only are they digital natives, but they use technology to enhance their shopping experience, right? They're not using it to replace shopping in stores. And they love web rooming. They love searching before they go into a store. They like when they're searching when they're in the store. And they're super well informed. Oftentimes, they're more well informed than the sales associates in the store. And they're spending about two to three times more shopping in stores than online. And they're yearning for a great experience with their friends. Um, and they're very picky. They want to see it, feel it, touch it. Um, they uh, they want to know what they're getting. And as we have heard before from other presentations, they have short attention spans. Um, so they love immediacy. If they try it on, they like it, they want to bring it home. They don't want to have to wait for it being delivered. <coughs> Indoor mapping and navigation. I find this a hugely interesting space. And it's like the last frontier of mapping and navigation. Right? Most of Earth has been now mapped. Um, but some of the biggest malls have, have yet to be understood. <laughs> when you look at directories, it can be quite confusing. And it would be great to have a mobile app that could tell you not only how to get to one location, but what if you had three or four locations and you wanted to find the most efficient route within the mall to go, right? Or imagine if you had the ability to do universal search, where you could search across the mall for like black dress and see all the places that have the perfect black dress. And it's not only going to help you how to get to your store, but how to get to the particular aisle where your product is located. Another key piece of, piece, place of innovation is within customer service. Uh, there's a company called Augmate that's working on business applications um, using tablets and digital eyewear. So an example would be if you're working with a sales associate, they could help you and tell you whether or not that product's available, whether they have it in your size, they can give you product recommendations, overall improving the customer experience when they're shopping. Also, the physical space is also transforming that retailers are using, right? Some of the new things that are happening is you're seeing really clean retail space where they only have one item per product on display. They don't have a rack of tons of different sizes. They have one, one item there. It allows you to reinvent the visual display of retail, making a more imaginative and experiential uh, methodology. <clears throat> and when you go around, you can actually select different items using your mobile phone and build up a product list, get product recommendations, see if it's available in store, and then you go to the dressing room, and all of your sizes are brought into the room for you. If it doesn't fit, you can pick a different size, have that brought in for you. And if you really like it, you can scan it, purchase it, and go. <clears throat> Another space that is uh, very interesting for, for physical retail is that e-commerce, for a long time, has been a leader in data analytics. And now you're seeing that the same data analytics are being brought to the physical world. Um, there's a company called Nomi, which is the largest indoor data analytics company. They're combining Wi-Fi with cameras, with beacons, and online and offline marketing to understand what's actually happening in the store. Whether it's from figuring out how many people are coming in and out of the store, how long they're waiting in the store, understanding the demographics, heat maps, where do people actually hang out in the store, tying into POS systems to look at conversion rates, as well as being able to make more efficient use of staff so you know that you have the right number of people working at any given time. <clears throat> and stores now are also doubling, not only as retail space, but also as distribution centers. If you think of a customer ordering online and they get to the online checkout, we're increasingly going to see same day and on-demand delivery as an option. And you're going to be using a company called Deliv, which is integrated into the back-end systems of retailers, which is API routing for where that product is located, and getting people to go pick it up and deliver it to your house from the local mall, the local retailer. One prediction that I'll make today on stage <coughs> is about the word e-commerce. I think five years from now, we'll no longer use the word e-commerce, at least not in how we use it today. It'll simply be more understood as a channel and not a business. Because whether you're buying something online or buying it in a store, it's just commerce. And we've all seen, you know, when we look at the old cliches or the new cliches, we're going to understand that neither of those are true. <clears throat> In fact, the mall is alive because it's at the center of our community. As we see the future conversion of physical retail with e-commerce, the mall is going to play an increasingly important role in the future of retail, both online and offline. Thank you. <clears throat>